All right, welcome back. We're here. Hey. Efren, what do you do when you have a disease that helps you, that keeps you from walking normal and you don't have a cure? What? You go ask a bunch of bats what the cure is. That's right, folks. <laughs> We're talking Morbius. You know, the scientific <laughs> documentary about Dr. Dr. Michael Morbius. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the opportunity to watch this beautiful film a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, it appears that our internets and our technical stuff and our schedules are going to let us talk about it here on our Real Pastors YouTube channel. Yeah, it's but, about time. It is about time. It is about time. You know, I've been looking up to the YouTube gods, Little G, uh, mm -hmm. saying, do you not want us to do this anymore? What are you trying to tell us? Yeah. And, but I'm not going to let it stop us. We're going to continue because we're here to review Morbius. Yes, and excited about it. And we... Um... I was able to get a review up for Sonic. That was almost a hassle in itself uh, because of technology and stuff. But there's that. Now we're here with Morbius. We saw it when it came out two weeks ago. Yeah. And we need to talk about it, people. We need to talk about this. But believe it or not, there's actually a lot I want to say about this movie. Um, and, and maybe the reason why it's taken us some time to do this is because I needed time to prepare the things I want to say. Right. Because the things I want to say aren't necessarily about the movie. It's more of the reaction to the movie. Yeah, Mainly. which is fair. Yeah. yeah, which is fair. Because honestly, I mean, again, it's been two weeks. You guys have heard the buzz, good or bad, whatever. <laughs> yeah, you guys have heard it. And uh, and the thing is, it's like this movie had a, had a lot going against it. And I'll probably get into some of this here in a little bit. But it had a lot going against it. But to me it still had enough promise that I was actually excited to see it. Um, and to just kind of bring this up here, uh, like even this poster, this was made, I think this is the IMAX poster or something. Either way, but like, it's pretty cool looking. And even from this poster, you're like, wow, this looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. And so that's why for me, I still had excitement going into this. I do know the character from the comics. Um, and again, I have more to say about some of that. But uh, yeah, so this is something that had, coming to it i mean excitement going into it uh jared leto as morbius himself as dr michael morbius and uh he's trying to heal a disease that he has and his best friend has and he ends up uh like he started off with let's look at the bats and see how we can splice our dna with bat dna and if this sounds silly to you because it is it's a comic book movie it's supposed to be a little bit far-fetched but they try to make it work the best they can and uh and that's pretty much Morbius. He turns himself into a bat. You've seen this from the trailer. And then after that, stuff happens. It's probably the best way to put it. Ace Ventura, not a fan of this story, by the way. No, not at all. Um, that, yeah, and first off, that poster right there, I, I don't want to show my hand too much, but this is an example of the movie not doing justice to the poster because that is a sick poster. Mm -hmm. And if the steelbook looks anything as cool as that, I might have to buy it just for the art. <laughs> Yeah, just because the art's cool. Just down the road, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so let's dive into this, shall we? Yep, let's do it. Um, the good. Yep. Go ahead, Gary. Uh, okay, I'm even going to say this because I've said it before. I'm not the biggest Jared Leto fan. Mm -hmm. um, Jared Leto was, was good. He really was. Um, right. My issues with this movie aren't Jared Leto at all. I thought you could tell he took the role seriously. He prepared mm -hmm. for it. He enjoyed it. And he takes all his roles seriously, less maybe too seriously if you talk to the cast of Suicide Squad. But right. he he did a he did a really good job in this movie, and he did a good job for this character. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree. I was happy with him. I mean, honestly, I don't know what other movies other than Suicide Squad that I've actually seen Jared Leto in that I can remember. So coming off that and and i guess snyder cut mm -hmm. a little bit yeah. but uh you know so this is the first time i've actually seen like a movie that he stars in and is a part of and all that from start to finish and yeah i agree i think he did a great job um he this is one of those like you could tell he was in it he sold the he sold the character of michael morbius to me made it believable and all that so i i, I was very pleased with his of uh, his performance and then the doctor lady i forget who plays her but uh <clears throat> i thought his kind of girlfriend, kind of not, whatever was going on. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I thought she did a good job as well. Um, 
so I thought that was great. And then and then that and then the guy who was the doctor taking care of him and his best friend. I forget the actor's name. He's a phenomenal actor. Oh, he's good. He, yeah, I'm currently watching him in a series on HBO Max called Chernobyl. Um, oh, okay. He is terrific. I'm gonna pull up the IMDb machine. Yeah, you're gonna have to do that. His name. Yeah. So he's that. And while he does that, I forgot to say this at the top. We will be spoiling the crap out of this movie. It's been out for two weeks. If you haven't seen it, go see it before we get any further into this. We will yeah. spoil it. We're going to talk end credits. We're going to talk what happens. Yeah. So if you haven't yet, go check that out. But yeah, but that guy, he's a phenomenal actor. What's that? Jared Harris. Jared Harris, yes. Phenomenal actor. Definitely sold the parts that he had. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I thought people involved in it was good uh, for the most part. And um, I thought that was really well done. I thought the... You know, some of the fight scenes and graphics were pretty cool. Like, the CG was pretty cool um, on some of it. And when you could see it, you know, I guess we're kind of showing my hand there. But, yeah. like, like this shot right here, like, him kind of teleporting-esque or maybe moving super fast. They didn't really explain what was going on. But that was – I thought the parts when you could actually see and stuff was actually really cool. So, I liked that. I thought that was um, – I yeah. thought that was pretty good. And, yeah, and it was one of those, like, I wish they would have had more of that. But – you know, so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, Very video game-ish in a good way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, let's see. Probably beyond that, I'm not really sure what else to talk about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I said, the casting was fine. Mm -hmm. um, I thought the guy that played his friend Milo, Matt Smith is his name. According, he was good. You know, the only person I thought was kind of out of place was Tyrese Gibson as the FBI yeah. agent. You could tell it was kind of like, okay, be angry FBI guy. All right. Um, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> but it's also Tyrese. He's not really known for his acting. He's known to True. be loud. Like I'm Boy, that was a great movie from back in the day. <laughs> dog and Tyrese. Anyway, don't watch that movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway. I know, I'll just say, for the stuff I've seen Tyrese, and I'm like, all right, he's just yeah. there to be loud and be buff. That's really <laughs> all he's there for. Exactly. <laughs> like, I don't uh, know what else he's there for. So shall we shift to the bad? Yeah, we might as well go ahead and shift to the bad. Probably a little bit more to say here. Um, yeah. I'll yeah. say this at the top. Sorry. Go ahead. This movie is nowhere near as bad as people are saying. Yeah. People are saying it's got a four on IMDb right now. Mm -hmm. um, nowhere. Oh, it's gotten up to five. Okay. Okay. Right. So that's a little better. 5.2. It is nowhere near that bad. People are saying it's the worst comp movie ever made. No, 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 no. No, no, no it's not. Um, we've got to stop this. If a movie doesn't check every box for you, it is not the worst movie ever made. Calm down. Internet. No, but it's far yeah. from great. Um, yeah. So that being said, it's not good. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the bad, the pacing is really bad in this movie. Um, it looks like about 10, 15 minutes of this movie should have been left in. Mm -hmm. um, as you and, and someone like me who doesn't really know the comics, which, you know, I don't like, I probably should. I needed to know more about what was going on with him. And yeah. it seemed like the rules of his condition after the bats overtake him kept changing, you mm -hmm. know? Um, so it just kind of, yeah. Um, and the way a lot of the fight scenes, except for what we mentioned in the good w was shot was, was really close up, really clunky. Mm -hmm. um, it was almost like they were afraid to get an R rating, R rating. So they edited it as to yeah. why they just didn't want to show too much. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that just kind of like, okay, you know, don't be afraid to do what you want to do. Make the movie and then let the chips fall where they may. Yeah. Uh, so, so they yeah. still could have gone a little further, especially after seeing the Batman. They could have yeah. gone a little further, still got PG thirteen. Oh, they could have gone much further, much. Further. Yeah, um, with the action and all that, they could have done yeah. a little bit better. Yeah. So pacing, more story, and editing was pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. It's like, and so, and here, and here's where. And I think that people need to understand this when you're going into this. Like, yes, it, it was bad. Like, we're not saying this is a great movie. But when I, when I said earlier, this had a lot going against it. Remember, this movie was supposed to come out in 2020. Yeah. Like, it was supposed to be like, I think, March 2020 or something like that. Is when it was supposed to come out. Obviously, COVID hits. It get pushed back. You know, again, they got pushed back to the end of 2020. Okay, then, you know, beginning of 2021. No, end of 2021. Okay, January 22. And then, obviously, when it came out now in April. Now, here's what you got to remember. This movie was shot and finished before Endgame was even finished. Mm -hmm. That's how long ago they've been working on this thing. So then they've shot and, and they did that. Endgame happened. And then COVID hits. It gets pushed back. And then what ends up happening is No Way Home comes out. 
Mm-hmm. And now, granted, this is still Sony. I don't know why Sony chose to keep Morbius, push, keep pushing it back to after No Way Home. Because what ended up happening, and the director, I forget his name, he ended up telling how, like, they had to go back and edit and change some things to try to make it fit into what's happening with No Way Home. Daniel. And to try to make it, yeah, yeah, exactly. Daniel, I knew it was Daniel something, but I can't remember his last name. And, uh, and so, like, the studio had to interfere and say, okay, Morbius now doesn't make sense because Endgame and everything else happened when we, so they already planned this, Endgame happened, COVID hit, which is still probably would have worked. They had a plan. But then No Way Home happens, and then it's like, what the heck's going on? I mean, this was supposed to come out before, um, be, you know, before Venom Two, mm. which yeah. even then Venom Two they had to make changes because it was pushed back, and they had to make changes to line up with No Way Home, mm-hmm. and and that's where some of the people were like, some of this stuff isn't making sense, mm-hmm. and so so Morbius is like caught up in this as well, and they're trying to make it fit, and this is where it's like you should have just told the story you wanted to tell. Yeah. You shouldn't have worried about the extra universe. You shouldn't have been worried about what's going on. And then, yeah, if it, even though, I mean, you're already explaining everything that's happening. Like, here's everything that went on. This is why it kind of got messed up. If you're going to do that anyways, just tell the story you, you wanted to be yeah. told. Because, yeah. for instance, like like this shot right here. You see this in the trailer. Mm-hmm. We're spoiling it. You don't see this shot in the movie. Mm-hmm. They took it out because of what happened in No Way Home. Mm-hmm. And, and we don't know what's going on. They're trying to make things kind of fit. And this is something that, like, I feel that if they would just released it the way it was, the the fifteen minutes that you were talking about, we probably would have had. Yeah. That that that, that is missing. And, we and had so, a yeah, team. yeah. So so them chopping it, trying to make it fit into the other, they should have just said the heck with that and just told the Morbius story they wanted to tell. And it's kind of like you know, I'd like to see Sony take a little bit of what DC's doing right now, where they do have their universes, but they're focusing more on their the story they're trying to tell within that movie. Mm-hmm. Let the chips fall where they may adjust for the future. Um, and while we're talking the bad, um, spoiler, um, the more I thought about the end credit scene, um, spoiler, yeah. uh, Michael Keaton shows up, uh, looks like Vulture, shows up, looks like he yeah. gets thrown into with what happens in No Way Home. And I, I, the more I thought about it, it made no sense. Didn't care for it. Um, no. You know, so he, he just ends up, he goes from one universe where he's in jail to another universe where he's in jail. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And, and then all of a sudden the other credit scene, which was randomly put in, which you can tell this was tacked on. He's yeah. Got his vulture stuff. Um, and our good buddy, Alan brought this up. I don't know if it was when we were talking about the theater or when we were, he was, you know, he gave me a ride home. Um, that is all from the NC MCU stuff. That is stuff tech he got from Stark. Yeah. After the first Avenger. So how in the world is it here? You know, maybe that's yeah. me thinking, but I'm also like, if you're going to shoehorn something like that, at least do it right. Yeah, no, and it's valid. And that's the thing. And again, the when the original trailer comes about, come, came out, go back and check out the original trailer that first came out. There's that scene where Michael Keaton says, hey, Morbius, let's keep in touch or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, here, and here's what I think is going on is when, like when J. Jonah Jameson first showed up at the end of Far From Home. Mm-hmm. He showed up. He was in that. He was in that universe, and everyone was just like, "Great, they brought him back." This is this universe's version of J. Jonah Jameson, which everyone was okay with. No one batted an eye. Mm-hmm. I wonder if the plan was, "Hey, we have uh, Michael Toomes here. We have, I mean, not Michael Toomes, uh, Adrian Toomes here. Sorry, Michael Keaton playing Adrian Toomes. We have him as Vulture, but this version exists in this universe. I feel like that's what they were going for." But because of everything that happened, they they just dropped the ball completely. Because even this shot, it's like, like this is the shot from like one of the end credit scenes where he just kind of pops up and he's looking around. And he's like, uh, I guess I hope this place is, has better food or some nonsense like that, yeah. which felt very tacked on. And it was just like, okay, you have Michael Keaton, you have something. Again, just commit to what you were originally planning to do. Yeah, I don't understand why they had to try to make it all fit and make sense. Like, it, it doesn't have to. It's fine. We understand that Venom and Morbius is in a separate universe. Heck, most of us are even talking theories that this is probably the Andrew Garfield universe, and maybe they can bring that back and finish that story off, which would be great. That would be great. Because they, they already set, set up some stuff with Sinister Six stuff. Maybe that's where they're going, but the way they handled it was just terrible. Well, terrible. It kind of sends mixed messages because on one hand, I see, okay, I feel like 
Sony's trying to say, we're doing our own thing. Here's our venom, you know, and maybe mm-hmm. we'll bring Andrew Garfield, but then they do this. And it's like, well, maybe we'll do the MCU stuff too. Let's just, it's like, what are you, what are you trying to do here? Right. Uh, so we'll see what they do. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be there for it because I was a fan of the two venom movies. Um, and I'm excited to see more of that universe. And, and, as much as I didn't like the end credit scene, I am interested to see what they do next. I hope they yeah. figure it out. But I'm also like, all right. Yeah, they're going to need to explain it because, again, if they would have just like if they would have just said, "Hey, this is this universe version of of Vulture," that would have made a whole lot more sense than what they're doing. Like, why does it have to tie in? Because of course, now with No Way Home, it makes no sense. He should have at the end of No Way Home, he should have gone back mm-hmm. to his universe. He shouldn't have stayed. Yeah. So again, that's where that stuff doesn't make sense. And I think this is where the movie as a whole, the, like the end credit scene shows exactly the movie as a whole, what was wrong with it was, was I feel like they had, they had a, probably a decent script. I feel like this movie should have been on par with the first Venom. It probably had a decent script to just to tell a story, to get you introduced to the character, which I thought they did a decent job of introducing Morbius. No, yeah. But you know, so like, I feel like, that's what they were trying to do, but then all of a sudden felt the need to tie everything in. Shouldn't have done that um, because and everything got muddled. You could tell even throughout the movie, things were added and shifted through just to make it make sense. And it a lot of it did it. They felt very rushed, as you said. Um, they didn't take enough time explaining exactly what was happening to Morbius. They had like one little montage, but it didn't do enough because more things happened. He had end up getting more powers and it just didn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, Again, it's just stuff that happened that you that again. I think you can tell if once the Blu-ray releases, I need I need all those deleted scenes or I need a director's cut or something because I feel like I feel like there's a better movie here. We just didn't get to see it. Yeah, and what I'm starting to worry about a little bit, and this might be you know I can be an overthinker as you know, but when I see that end credit scene and I see it's, it's almost like. Sony's like, hey, we want to move forward, but remember No Way Home? Remember how good that was? Mm -hmm. That was great. And it's like, all right, yeah, it was a great movie. Can't wait to buy it tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. But also, like, let's move forward. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So we'll see. And uh, jury's out on that. But Mm -hmm. also, like, maybe just have him show up at the end, but don't show the scene where he's talking to Morbius. Like, maybe that's a little bit too much bit on the nose but yeah anyway yeah and again it doesn't make sense him having his whole vulture gear how'd you get that like you just got released from jail at least and that's how the movie feels you just got released from jail all of a sudden you have your stuff which even in the mcu he didn't even make his stuff like yeah. the tinkerer made it like so it just so much of it just doesn't make sense and you know we're not gonna let that stuff slide Think about this stuff way too much oh yeah you're talking about comic book people like yeah. it there's, it needs to make sense, especially if you're going to tie universes or Marvel, Sony. I am okay if y'all just say MCU is done. We're just going to make our own little like standalone stuff. That's okay. Look at the Batman. Sorry, moving yeah. on. We'll go watch it. I promise. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we will. Yeah, it doesn't we'll all have to tie together to anymore. House. We'll go watch it. Yeah. Listen, most of us after Endgame, we're kind of like whatever, anyways. We just want to watch good movies. Mm-hmm. Like, come on. So are you ready to rate this thing? Yeah, let's do it. So um, I wish I could give it to my solid hats off masterpiece, but this is going to be a two for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, not awful, but eh. Yeah. Watch it. Yep. And I'll keep that up there. That's where I ended up too was is also, it is a two. Um, <laughs> it, you know, it was, you know, it, it's one of those, like, if you've seen the movies you want to see and you just want to go kill some time, go watch Morbius. Yeah. Like, it's entertaining enough. Really got to turn your brain off and just kind of just watch it for what it is, I guess. Um, but that's about it. Like, again, it's not a dumpster fire. So that's why neither one of us are giving it a one. Yeah. It's Mor- not as... Mor- Morbius is one of the... So my in-laws, a lot of times when I go over to their house, there's always... There's a lot of times a movie they're invested in and they're playing it in the background. Mm-hmm. And usually, I mean... They're usually not great movies. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Something on top. Morbius is a movie they would have on, like, in the background, like, yeah. You know, hey, watching this Bat movie. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, it's like, and you guys know, if it gets a two, it's not shelf worthy. 
The only reason why I, w- I would maybe own this, maybe because of cool art on the box, yeah. um, or maybe just to have it because of what they're trying to do with Venom Verse. Let's just say that for now. Yeah. You know what it might build up to. It might be important to have when you're trying to watch everything unfold. Yeah. Maybe that that that'd be the only reason why I would be like, I probably will buy the Morbius because I just want to be able to watch them all as it leads into whatever. Maybe. Yeah. But, uh, but like, to say I got to have it because I love this movie, not a chance. Like, that's not what it is. No, it'll probably be something, depending on how cool the art is, though. Yeah. We're suckers for that. Yes, so, we are. Well, thanks for watching. That's our review. Did you see Morbius? What did you think? Did you like it more than us? Did you hate it more than us? Comment below, but don't be a jerk. There you yeah. go. Subscribe, like, all that. Yep. Thanks for joining us. We'll see all you right. again soon. Goodbye.